I'm Gerald Bentley. This is LVWS Confidential because I couldn't figure out an acronym for Las Vegas wrestling scene. I'm joined by Jody himself. Maybe maybe you can come up with an acronym. I, I don't know. Hmm. I'm working on it. Give me some time to think. By the end of the show, yeah, it, does, great one. it doesn't really enter a word. Jody, you're one of the more charismatic personalities in the Las Vegas wrestling scene. Wanted to have you on, and I know just recently you were at the Pride Style event as the new commissioner of Pride Style. Yeah, um, that was a very cool opportunity. I didn't mean to apply for the job. Um, I thought I was just RSVPing to the event, and apparently it was a job application. <laughs> uh, showed up, and they said I was hired. I don't know how I did it, but. Well, there, there's a long history of wrestling commissioners ending up in the middle of the middle of disputes and the middle of uh, angles. Uh, do you see oh, anything yes. coming out of that? Are you going to be, you're going to be the authority figure kind of uh, stepping, uh, stepping down and ruling with an iron fist, or are you going to be a little bit more hands off? Whatever gets the least amount of people to want to beat me up is what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, you know, I know, haven't been able to get into the ring yet uh working on getting medically cleared is everything going okay um so yes and no um it is a i'm feeling better than i was it's been about a month out of the accident now um the ribs i have uh three broken ribs um and that's still healing up that's still the the, the worst part i had a small tear in my right shoulder um that feels fine at this point and okay. then my, I had a collapsed lung, and that's that's really what's going to be keeping me out for a while. Um, sure. The rib, like the the, you know the, I don't know what the word would be like the uh, the bone injuries and stuff like that. Those heal. The lungs going to take a while to be where it was. Um, but we're hoping we're hoping that I could be cleared by like February or March. Okay, so not too too long. I mean, now I've, is this the first is this the first injury you've dealt with in your career? Um, about a year ago, I broke, uh, part of my foot, but it wasn't anything major. It healed up pretty quickly. Like it was a small fracture, thankfully. Well, that's good. Cause yeah, we need to need to get you back in there. Former versus Battleborn champion, former FSW heavyweight champion. And I definitely yeah. wanted to, wanted to mention that because, uh, you actually, we're in the ring with uh, Karrion Cross, Killer Cross, who is just, uh, if you were watching the WWE, saw him in the Extreme Rules event. And oh, yeah. People that maybe aren't familiar with you, Jody, how uh, how did that come about? How did you end up winning the FSW title? Um, so thankfully, like you said, I ended up in the ring across from Karrion. Um, thankfully, he was more of an ally to me at that time. Um, so the current champ was Hammerstone, still is Hammerstone. Hammerstone's going to be champ forever. He, he's the most dominant person Vegas has ever seen, probably. Um, but he issued an open challenge and I answered, uh, and Cross, Cross was the one who pushed for me to do that. Um, and at the time I thought maybe he was trying to get me killed or something. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, the ref gets knocked out and Cross came out hit Hammerstone with a chair and gave him a power driver. And next thing I know, I was champ. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> I remember nothing. I was dropped on my head and uh, multiple times, power bomb thrown all around. But I won the belt. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, a, a win's a win, right? A little bit of a mismatch. Uh, for people who aren't familiar with seeing you in the ring, how, how would you describe your style? Um, I've had a lot of people call me like the Gen Z Sandman. Where, okay. where it's not going to be really pretty, but I'm just going to go out there and fight, claw from my way, usually from the bottom. You know, I'm a smaller guy. I usually have to fight my way up, but that that's what I like to pride myself on is fighting up and I don't stop fighting, you know? Well, and, and you do definitely get the crowd on, on your side. Mm. I mean, is is the ring psychology, is that a big part of your that a big part of your approach uh just 
kind of um, getting everyone getting everyone involved absolutely but i think i think a big part of it is um with why the fans got so behind me is that a lot of people can't relate to you know the big buff guy who beats everybody up a lot of people can relate to the guy who's getting beat up though sure um, not everybody like, and, and I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody like that. Wrestling needs the larger than life characters. They need the, uh, the guys who look like demigods in the ring, you know, but they, the average person can't relate to that. But I feel like everybody can find a little piece of themselves and somebody fighting from the, from the beneath trying to come up and finally getting a win, you know? Yeah. There's definitely something where, you're more approachable than you know, just for example, a Hammerstone or uh, Brian Cage, another uh, another guy who's been active in Las Vegas. Right. Well, both, both very nice, very nice guys. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just different. Everyone can relate to different things. Sure. What got you involved in pro wrestling? Um, so I actually saw that you had an episode of the Ricky Tenacious recently. Mm hmm. Um, he, I went to middle school with Ricky. Um, okay. And I, at the time in middle school, I had never seen wrestling. I'd never, like I had heard of it, of course, but I'd never really watched it. Um, but I was always an actor. I was always like a theater kid. And I went into an improv class and Ricky Tenacious was, was there teaching it. And we, we instantly became friends. We got along really fast. And then he, one day he was just like, Hey, my dad's opening a wrestling school. Do you want to come down and try it out? sure why not <laughs> and then yeah and then through the years it became big valley wrestling after that mm -hmm. and then i just stuck with it and that, how long ago was that how long have you been involved so i've been involved that was 2015 i want to say okay so um but i didn't actually start wrestling until 20 like mid 2018 early 2019 i was a manager for a long time okay well you've gotten a lot accomplished in just that short time who Thank were you. some yeah i mean absolutely multiple titles who were some of the people that were influential in your training um as in like people that i like to watch or people who like actually trained me uh people who actually trained you but then people who kind of inspire you that's a good answer too sure um so i i credit everything that i know how to do with uh like all the basics all the how to how to have a match. It's all cutthroat Cody. Um, Cody is the reason that I make sure all my punches and forearms look like they're actually knocking somebody out. It, it's the reason that I hit hard. It's the reason that I do everything that I do. Um, Cody gets 100% credit. And then I also had some, uh, some finishing up. Like I, I did a two month course with Vampiro who kind of just, after I knew what I knew, he, gave me different ways to go about it well, vampiro big big name uh yeah probably vampiro a lot of people remember him from wcw and big and uh big in lucha libre oh yeah yeah and, and that, that's what was really cool about that is like the first hour of every class would be normal wrestling or normal american wrestling and then the second hour he would teach us all lucha libre stuff that we had never done before so that gives you a little bit of a hybrid style uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, I need to, I, I don't use the Lucha Libre as much, as much as I should. A lot of people wouldn't even know that I know how to do it, but maybe I'll start busting it out when I'm back. Yeah. Once you, you get the new lung, you get the new lung capacity, you'll be able to, to really run and gun. So, uh, who were the wrestlers that inspired you just to get to the uh, second part? Um, so funny enough, Vampiro was, um, cause like I said, I never really watched wrestling growing up. But there was a video game, Backyard Wrestling 2, and Vampiro was a playable character on there. And I played that game with my older brother constantly. Um, so whenever I found out that he was a real guy, like when I started watching wrestling, I immediately like started watching a bunch of Vampiro tape, um, which it makes it so much cooler that I was able to train with him later on in life. Um, my first ever favorite wrestler was CM Punk, which I'm sure a lot of people in my age group say the same thing. Um, but I grew up like going to punk rock shows and you know, that, that scene was my scene. And whenever I saw somebody that I could relate to on TV, I was like, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Um, and Christian cage is a big one for me too. I love Christian. 
he's still uh still going. He's still taking, rolls too. taking turns both ways. Good guy, bad guy. Right. Um. He, I re I re I was always like a big Christian guy because growing up with my friends, they all watch wrestling and they would go to the like park and they'd want to play as their favorite wrestler, you know. And everybody always wanted like if me and my friends are wrestling, it'd be me and my older friend. He'd be Edge, so I'd be like, "Oh, I'm Christian," and then the other guy would be like, "Oh, I'm Jeff Hardy." I'd be Matt Hardy. So I always like, not not saying that they're the the any worse than their partner, but it's typically like kids growing up had a the one that they wanted to be. Like everyone wanted to be Jeff Hardy with the face paint and the sure. So I always relate to the to the their partner, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. I think Edge. Yeah, you can definitely say Edge probably got more of the more of the credit than Christian, but uh, both extremely influential and in oh yeah, being what arguably one of the best tag teams ever, and then both oh, yeah. ended up being world champions. Yeah, as they should. As they should. They're both excellent. Yeah. Now, so you grew up in Las Vegas, or did you move to Vegas? I was born and raised here. Um, okay. Yeah, I've I've lived here my whole life. Um, like I said, I went to middle school with Ricky. Like, um, never really lived anywhere else. And that's oh, go ahead. Uh, that's why that's why it's such like a big thing to me. Like putting on for the Vegas wrestling scene. Like I I feel like a lot of people have dreams of like um, you know, they want to be on the top of the whole country or they want to be on WWE and go I, my, my main goal is to make the Vegas wrestling scene, the wrestling scene in America. And part of that, I know you're, you're involved with one of the promotions that's just kind of just started recently, right? Yeah. Um, me and four of my friends, it was me, uh, Chris Mounts, who's the owner of the company. Um, Lazarus, Sandra Moon, and Adriel Noctis. We uh, we just kind of had an idea one day. We were like, we didn't like how a lot of things were going, um, and things have gotten a lot better now in the scene. But at the time, we didn't like how a lot of things were going, um, and we thought, hey, we don't really have a space. We don't have a we don't have a a spot for us to feel home. So let's make our own. And in doing that, I feel like we've created a like I what I take the most pride in with that whole company is that I, a lot of people tell us it's like they're, they're home. And I love that. And that's, that's scrap house. Yeah. Did I not say that? Yeah. My fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to lead you in so you can introduce it, but now what, what makes scrap house different? What, what were the things that you um, wanted to have part of it to be part of the DNA, part of the character of it to make it unique? So I think that the main thing that separates us from any other company, any other wrestling company in town is that we're not really a wrestling company. Um, we, we are based around wrestling. We love wrestling and wrestling is the heart of our company, but we, I view it as more of like a Las Vegas underground culture event. You know, we do like, um, I don't know if you've been out to a grab house event, but we do a night market where, we usually 10 to 20 different local vendors, just local businesses come out and we give them a spot to share their products, sell their company, you know, okay. um, we have food trucks. We have, um, we've done rappers, we've done bands, we have events outside of, uh, outside of our actual grab house events. We partnered with like Zia records, which is the local record store out here. Um, we have, I don't know if I'm allowed to announce it yet, but we have a partnership with a local downtown bar in the arts district. That's, uh, uh I'm just going to say, it. uh, at Cerveza, we're doing a lottery a night, uh, to help them out with business and get us some business, hopefully for Grap house. We're just partnering. Our main thing is we want to be part of the Vegas culture, like I said, and I think we're doing that pretty well. Yeah. And kind of integrate into the city and bring people up because if more people are involved, then, Exactly. It's a more organic feel, right? Exactly, yeah. So, with the... You have a show coming up, right? Um, towards the end of this month? Yeah. Um, we have Grap Houses for Lovers on October 21st. Um, this one, this one's... It's, it's like a theme show. We don't usually do themes, but this one, uh, because there's that big When We Were Young festival that weekend... Um, it's a big like pop punk and emo festival. We're doing an emo night to where everyone's like encouraged to dress up like they were in the 
early 2000s MySpace, essentially. Okay. Um, but yeah, that should be really cool. We have um, some really, really good matches announced for that one, I'd say. Um, we have, like, um, Lazarus versus Hoodfoot has been a match that I've wanted to happen since we made the company. I don't I don't think Hoodfoot's ever been on a Las Vegas wrestling show, but they're, I think that the scene's going to take to him really really well. He's a hard hitter. He's a big guy, and he's one of the craziest people I've ever met, but I mean that as a compliment. Well, and you can definitely get, you can branch out, right, since you're just starting, get a little bit of that sports entertainment feel in and still have the matches. Oh, yeah. Plus, build around it. And I think something that's unique, what what I really find interesting with Las Vegas versus the other cities in the country is you do have multiple vibrant active promotions and everybody does seem to be working working well together because there's your your Vegas personalities are showing up on all the different promotions. So it really gives it a dynamic synergistic feel that you you just don't have really anywhere else except for maybe maybe LA and York because in a lot of the country you have one or two little promotions and you know they go once a month whereas in if, Las Vegas you have somebody every week going yeah. and you can follow people yeah and and what I like about the Vegas wrestling scene too is that every company in town has a different feel you know like we have Grap House which is like more of like the I'd say like the hardcore, like underground punk rock kind of feel. But then you have like Big Valley who has like the old school wrestling, like, you know, like the, uh, whenever I go to a Big Valley show, it takes me back to like watching like Hogan tapes, you know, it's like the, mm -hmm. how wrestling was formed. And then you have like FSW who I'd say is more of like the current day WWE style, you know, with the big, like I said, larger than life personalities and all that. Then you have like pride style who has like their, own brand of like inclusive wrestling that feels more of like a uh, I mean it's in the name like a pride event mm -hmm. and then versus who versus is really cool to me because they give a lot of chances to a lot of people who you wouldn't normally get to see in Vegas you know like they uh they're not afraid to experiment and I like that a lot and then versus is so cool too because they do all those like um conventions like the level up expo and they're they're really in scene with like the video game community I'd say which there's definitely a tremendous crossover of the demos. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, wrestling, video games, anime. I mean, it's, yeah, that's it's really it's a boom time right now because y you see the national promotions, but now you're seeing the I don't know what you want to say super regional promotions like an FSW that's coming up, and then tons of regional promos. I, I was doing a little background uh before we had a chance to talk and i saw you uh battling here one of the independent wrestling sensations i think you could say of the last couple of years effie oh yeah for the party and a party hard rules uh match in arizona and i yeah. was just wondering what are party hard rules so party hard wrestling is or i guess was they had their last show recently um my favorite indie pro indie wrestling promotion in the world um they are the first company who gave me laz and sandra a chance um they believed in okay. us and they gave us a platform and they are honestly a big reason that grab house exists like the vibe that they had out there was similar to ours where every show just it, it was it was a party first a wrestling show second you know and um the party hard rules match was essentially just that there were no rules at all. Okay. Um, unfortunately that match happened, uh, the day that COVID shutdown happened. Oh, um, so usually party hard shows would have three, 400 people there sold out standing room only. Um, and this one, we were all already in the building. They announced that we couldn't have anyone in on the news. So me and Effie wrestled for like, I think eight people who were just, friends and family of the crew, but it was still really Effie. I've had the chance to wrestle Effie twice and Effie is amazing to learn from amazing to wrestle with. It's so much fun every time. Um, 
but yeah, like even like I said, with nobody in the building, I still had a great experience working at V. He's he's done a great job, and you know the goal of every wrestler, right? Getting yourself over. Um, oh yeah, just and really now breaking into the national scene with GCW. Yeah. So what are what are some of the some of the other things that you would pull over from that promotion to to Grab House? Just uh any special oh. matches? I I know I saw one area of the match where everybody had to drink a shot, uh both wrestlers and the referee. Oh which yes. Is kinda oh. crazy. Okay, so that was actually our this, second this match. This may have been the bring. first okay. Yeah. The the first match was just me and Effie in a singles match where um we uh where it was shut down. Uh that one was a triple threat with Project Triple Quest. Threat. Um yeah, so the that party hard rules match was I don't remember the exact time on it, but it was every like two minutes, I believe, you had to do a shot. Um and Effie doesn't drink, which is funny. <laughs> um we were we were trying to change it to where every two minutes he could take a hit of his uh, vape pen or his, his weed pen, but the building wouldn't allow for that. Yeah. Uh, so I watched the footage back. I was mad about it afterwards, but apparently Effie was feeding his shots to the ref. So whenever I lose, it's because Effie was sober and we weren't. All right. I didn't lose. <laughs> because that's the only reason I lost. I promise. It's the ref's fault. Yes, absolutely. Fair um, enough. So, one thing that I've uh, I did notice too because obviously he's got he does tons of merchandising. I took a look at uh, at your merchandising and on uh, Brainbuster Tees looks like you have almost a hundred designs. So <laughs> do you make those up yourself? Is that something that you've you found kind of a connection with? Um. So some of them. The very first design, like my classic logo, it's like a melty smiley face, which I don't really use anymore because after I had that done, a bunch of other brands started using similar things. Um, that was actually a, a Christmas gift from my friend Chris Mounts, and that was like the first merchandise I ever really had. Um, but after that, like I just I have I have two friends who are really, really talented artists. Um, one's name is Daniel Rowe. He doesn't really do as much anymore, but for a while he was doing a ton of designs for a bunch of wrestlers. Um, and then my other friend, his name is Brendan Durant. Um, yeah. I just, I, I really just go to them and I have the idea in my head. I tell them and they just knock it out of the park every time. They just, I give them an, I give them a crumb and they make me a whole sandwich, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a lot because there's plenty of wrestlers. They have, you know, one, two shirts and I'm looking at yours and just keeps going. Yeah. So, that's pretty yeah. neat. Now, how active are you on the, the social media? Another big part with uh, the wrestling scene right now. Um, so for a long time, I was very, very, very active. Um, right whenever COVID hit, really, I, I, I would say I started doing just like dumb videos in my room or like because I couldn't go anywhere. I would just I would be bored all day and I'd just go on Twitter. And then the videos that I would do started getting a little bit of attention and I started like getting quite a bit of popularity. Like I would credit social media almost entirely to any success that I have. Like um, me, we used to be a stable called S4 TV. It was me, Laz, Sandra and Adriel. We started getting flown out just because people noticed us online. Like we went to Indiana for the first time because of the internet. We went to New Jersey for the first time because of the internet, like uh, Pittsburgh, like all over just because I was not, and it was all of us, like we were all just tweeting all day. And then that kind of started cooling off and then shows started coming back and I was inside less. And then I, I kind of just stopped using it. Um, I'm still on it sometimes, but for the most part now, I, I, and I need to pick it back up. Whenever I'm getting ready to return to the ring, I'm definitely going to start doing much more promotional material. But right now, I'm taking it as a break because sometimes you definitely need a social media break. Sure. Sure. No, that, that makes sense. And you're, uh, you got a couple more months to go. Now you, you've mentioned, uh, Sandra and, uh, Lazarus a couple times. I yes. really tight and still, still actively involved, right. In uh crap house. And oh yeah. Um, those are my two best friends in the entire world. 
Um, I've known them almost seven years now. Um, and there's like not a, if there's more than one day that we don't see each other or at least have like a phone conversation, something's weird. Um, and, and you guys met in wrestling? Yeah. Um, yeah, they were just at training one day. I was coming in for a show and I was just hit it off. Um, and then their whole family too. Like they have older siblings that I'm really, really tight with. Um, our, our host, our ring announcer slash commentator for Grap House, uh, Marky, he's their older brother. I've become really close with him. Okay. Um, they have a sister, Giselle, like their whole family. I just love their family so much. And I'm, a, they've like t- really taken me in. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and like, like you said, they're still the Grap House is me, Sandra, Laz and Chris Mounts. Like that is the team. That's the management team. Okay. You gotta be. You got to be impressed with uh, everything that Sandra has done too. She's really uh, risen up in prominence. I'm not proud of her at all. I think she sucks. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. She every time she goes out there, she gives it 100. percent And I've seen her through the highs and lows. Like I've seen her whenever she a few years back, she didn't really know if she wanted to keep doing this, and then she found the flame again, and she's just been killing it. Like it, it makes me so. And Laz too. Laz. I think is one big match away from being on the same level. He is, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I think Laz is the best wrestler in Vegas. Okay. Full stop. Like, and, and I might be biased, but I really do think he is. I mean, a lot of times that is it, right? You just need that one big match. Uh, the one opponent, maybe. The person that brings the five-star match out of you. Sure, yeah. And it's definitely not going to be me because Laz beats the hell out of me every time we fight <laughs> yeah well <laughs> just gotta find someone that right. uh, what uh, what would you say is the biggest well, goal you want to have coming up in the ring obviously getting healthy getting back in getting clear <laughs> but once you're back in what is it you're looking to accomplish or what, um, what things do you want to take on so my main goal in wrestling genuinely is making Grab House a premier promotion, uh, which I think we're, I think it is a premier promotion, but like a more well-known company, you know, that's my main goal. But for me personally, um, oh man, I don't know. Um, I guess right now, short term, I'll say I want to win tag team championships with Sandra. We've been talking about teaming. Okay. Uh, we were supposed to tag team on the 21st of this month, but of course I'm hurt. Um, but yeah, me and her are going to start teaming as the Henny Moon phase. And that, that'll be my short-term goal is tag team championships. Okay. That's a good goal. Well, and building Grab House up is a, is a great goal too. Now, yeah. can people, can people follow Grab House on all the social medias? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook are all Grab House LV. Um, and then we have, we're on IWTV as well, the streaming platform. Okay, great. So people watching this anywhere in the country can look it up and find those. Yeah. Check out some of the past matches. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's a huge, that's a huge bonus too. Now being able to get your content out to oh, everywhere. Yeah. And, and IWTV is great too. Like they're so easy to work with. Um, that, and they, they, the, my favorite part about it is that there's, I wouldn't say thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of promotions on there. So if you, if you, if you go to look up Grab House and you watch the Grab House show, it'll recommend you 50 other companies that are just as cool, you know? Mm-hmm. Then you can go all the way down the rabbit hole. Yeah. So there, oh, there's a lot the more, a lot more out there than just WWE and AEW. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it happens to me all the time. One minute I'll be watching, I'll go back to watch one of my matches on like Paradigm Pro Wrestling, and next thing I know, I'm watching 1980s independent wrestling. Don't even know how I got there. <laughs> how many, how many different promotions have you wrestled for already? It's been a lot. You um, track them? Um, I don't have an exact number. I don't think. Um, 
I've been lucky enough to wrestle in a lot of the really big notable ones. Um, like Paradigm Pro Wrestling in um, Indiana, especially over over the pandemic, was like front page of IWTV because they were one of the only companies running. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to work for them. I've wrestled for like Wrestlers Lab in uh, New Jersey. Um, like I said, Party Hard. I've gotten to do West Coast Pro and Prestige up in Northern California. Okay. Um, one of my favorite companies to wrestle is not even a company. Uh, there, there's a wrestler named MV Young. I don't know if you're familiar. He he was really active in Vegas uh, last year. Um, he runs parties. Like, it's just house parties in backyards and stuff. Oh, okay. And wrestlers from all around the country go and have... It's it's essentially a house party with people fighting in the middle of it. It's awesome. So, like, old school backyard wrestling, but it's... Yeah, but everyone's... Like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with... Colin Delaney. Uh, he yeah. was on like WWE CW. I got to have a match with Colin Delaney at a at one of those. Huh. <laughs> well, it's uh, there's many facets to the uh, wrestling world, isn't there? Oh yeah, and that's what I, that's what I love. Like that's why I wanted Grab House to happen so bad. Is I love those like underground, like gritty feeling shows. You know? Sure. Yeah, just to uh, get a little separation because you know, like. Like you were saying, not everything has to be super, super produced and network yeah. television ready. You can still can still get a lot out of it. Yeah, that's terrific. Now, I haven't asked you this. I've asked everybody else. Who would be your dream opponent? Could be know. literally anyone. So for a long time, uh, it was Colin Delaney and then I got to have that match. Um, right now, actively, I would say Peter Avalon. Pretty uh, Peter. Yeah. He, um, he was one of the first independent wrestlers I ever saw live and he's bigger now. Like he, he's put on a lot of weight, but whenever I first saw him, he was just as skinny as I was when I first started. Even I put on a little weight, not as much as he has, but he was like the first wrestler I remember seeing and being like, oh, maybe, maybe I could do this, you know? Um, and it, it just continues to be more inspiring to me because he's gone from the skinny guy that he was to the buff TV star that he is now. Yeah. He had some, he had some really fun matches and AEW, they had the uh, series with Brandon Cutler that was where awesome. yeah. neither one of them could win. They had double count outs, double disqualifications. And then finally, uh, I think Brandon Cutler ended up winning with, uh, a giant Dungeons and Dragons dice, but yeah, that was fun. And, and he's, he's pretty involved in championship wrestling from Arizona. Yeah. So he's, he's active in the independent scene too. That's yeah. a good name. That's kind of, uh, usually so, it's, I've been getting the, the all time superstars, but that, that's a good name. Yeah. Well, and, and it, it, it's even more messed up because it's been my dream match for years. I've told any promoter who will listen and, and Brandon from party hard. Uh, he, like I said, was always the first one to believe in me. He, um, on the last ever Party Hard show, he booked the match. It was supposed to be me versus Peter Avalon. And that was the day that we got in the car accident. Oh, heck. Yeah. So hopefully it'll happen again. Um, I've already had um, a couple of promoters reach out and say that they'll still make it happen for me. So hopefully. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't plan the accidents. At least everything's everything's going along well now i'm sure people are people are interested and want to know you know when they'll see you back because uh definitely got the following right uh, um bro- broken ribs aren't fun though i've had i did those before it's uh definitely yeah. slows you down brother it is terrible um like i said i'm i'm getting a lot better now uh slowly but surely but for a while there like i couldn't sleep i couldn't i could barely eat it was so bad Oh yeah, breathing hurts. Yeah, yeah. And well, so if I... you're gonna get chopped, uh, that definitely isn't a good combination. Oh, I hate chops anyway. Before I had broken ribs. <laughs> um, but yeah, when my lung collapsed, there was also an air bubble between the lung and the ribs. I was pushing on the ribs, so it hurt even worse. It was terrible. Hmm. Were Were you hospitalized for a little bit? Yeah, I had to spend two and a half, almost three days in the hospital. Um, and I don't know if he would want me to say this, uh, Feel free. I know, I know he's, uh, 
he's a pretty tough guy, but Cody, cutthroat Cody did not let me, he did not leave me alone. He was in the hospital pretty much the entire time. And except for like, if he had to go do something, if he had to go do something, you know? Well, that's, that's great. I mean, it's good to have good friends that are, yeah. I just wanted to put him stand over up and such a good guy. I just wanted to put him over. You. Yeah, absolutely. Love that man. No, that's terrific. Now, anyone else, anyone else that's been influential to you, you'd like to uh, give a mention? Um, Papiase. Papiase is, I was, uh, when Papiase married his wife, I was the best man. Um, and we, he's also my favorite opponent that I've ever had. Me and him have had, we've wrestled probably 30 times, but every single time we find something different to do. And, um, he was my first ever like real match, I guess. Um, okay. cause I had matches like, like the match with, uh, Hammerstone and cross. Like I had just started training at that point and I didn't really know what I was, I knew how to get thrown around and I knew how to like fight back a little bit, but I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I don't consider that one of my first real matches, you know, no matter how cool it is. Um, me and Papayase had a match at Samstown. It was a loser leaves FSW match in 2017. And that to this day might be my favorite match I've ever had. Okay. That's, that's great. And you may have a record too, for being the fastest debuting uh, wrestler to win the FSW title. I based think on what that, you said. I think that's correct. I think it was my, cause I, before that I had had, four matches and all of them were like random like six man or eight man tag team matches well that's that's something to put on the resume right oh for won, sure, the, yeah. won the fsw title in my first singles match yeah because that it, it it was my oh no i had one singles match before that technically okay uh it was a street fight against patrick i forget his last name he just went by patrick he was in the he was in cutthroat cody's stable at the time but second yeah. Second, Second match. match, still pretty good. Yeah, nothing to scoff at. Well, let's see. We'll kind of, kind of wind down here. I know we, we talked about your, your dream opponent and your favorite opponent. Anybody else that you're really looking forward to, either getting involved in a match with or feature prominently in Grab House. Ooh, that is a good question. Um, like I said, I'm very excited to um, me and me and Sander Moon have plans to have at least one tag match together. So I'm excited for that. That's that's what I'll say about in ring for myself. Um, for Grab House, so we had them on once. It's only once so far, but there's this tag team called the Natter Day Saints. It's Bradley Prescott the Fourth and Adam Slade, and to me, they are my favorite tag team in the entire world. Um, mm. They're, they do, they do a lot of comedy. And so a lot of people write them off because of that, but then like they proved it at Grab House. Um, they can go, they, they wrestled the Suavecitos who I also love. I'm a big Suavecitos fan. Um, and it was my, one of my favorite Grab House matches I've ever had. Um, I've ever had, I've ever put on, um, yeah, the promoted. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of a name that has never been on Grab House that I'd like to get on Grab House. Anyone, anyone that's going to be featured on the card coming up on the 21st? Um, Hoodfoot, like I said, I've always wanted Hoodfoot to come out, and we fr we're finally making that happen. Um, Sean Kemp is wrestling Bryn Thorne, and Sean Kemp is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Um, also one of my favorite people of all time. He, whenever we first went to Indiana, he, um, he offered up his, his bedroom to me, Laz, Cass, and Adriel. And we, we had never met before. Um, we'd never met in person and he let us stay with him. Um, yeah. Oh, Sonico, Sonico and Dr. Redacted. That's the match I'm excited for. Um, Sonico has been on once. Dr. Redacted has been on a couple times. They're. I don't know if you're familiar with either of their work. They're doing a death match. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to kill. I think they might actually kill each other. Um, and they're both just also great people. Um, and then to, to end, to end that question, 
with who I want to wrestle. I'm going to call out somebody who called me out at the last Grap House. Okay. Uh, Ratty Daddy Cole Radrick ended the Grap House show saying that he wanted to wrestle me. So I'm going to I'm going to end this question saying that I want to wrestle Cole Radrick. All right. Calling him out for the show coming up in springtime. <laughs> Eventually, yes. Yeah, as soon as as soon as the the Grap House medical staff gives you clearance. Yeah, we have a presiding we have, doctor there. Yeah, our, our doctor or well our doctor is doctor redacted, so I don't know how if I trust well, that his probably won't be advice. good. I think he'll he'll give you clearance now. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I trust his medical advice. I'm not sure if he's actually a medical doctor. He is. Is he? Oh, he, well. I don't know if he has a PhD, but yeah, he's definitely in the medical field. I don't know what he does exactly. Well, <laughs> if you can't trust a uh, deathmatch wrestler, who can you trust, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Terrific. So, any. Anything else coming up that uh, you're really excited for in in Las Vegas? I know there's some. Um, maybe I know you're not going to be uh, getting into too many matches, but uh, Lazarus and Sandra they got some big um, events coming up here. Uh, not in Las Vegas, but they are wrestling at uh, Naptown Pro Wrestling, Naptown All Pro. Okay, um, and that's our friend. It's ran by uh, the the. Owner is J Rose, who is our ring announcer for most of the Grap House shows. Um, and we don't have an official partnership with them, but we work with them a lot. So I'm excited for that. Um, in Vegas, I'm, I'm excited to be the Pride Style Commissioner. I think we're going to get into a lot of shenanigans with that one. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, oh, excuse me, they have a tag team championship tournament coming up. And I'm a huge tag team wrestler. Tag team wrestling is my favorite kind of wrestling. So uh, I'm really excited for that, and I don't know if they've announced any of the competitors for it yet, but I'm really pulling for uh, Lazarus and Alice Blair to be added and to win that tournament. They're the Las Vegas murder scene. Um, but there's just – the Vegas tag scene right now is awesome, and that's something I am really excited for is just tag team wrestling, Pride Style Pro. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. Well, definitely, definitely appreciated having you on. Uh, like I said, one of the more unique individuals in the wrestling scene here. I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I know that as we wind down the wind down the year, there'll be some more interesting things coming up. So I would encourage people to keep in touch on the Grab House sites and uh, also follow you and uh, check out the Brain Buster Tees to uh, see what uh, design number 101 is. Who's that? that should be coming out soon. Thank you. Yeah, and, and everyone subscribe, do whatever you got to do for the Las Vegas wrestling scene. The website, their all their social media, the, what they do for the scene is, I don't know if they get enough credit, but they deserve all the credit. It's, it's amazing. Right, thanks. Yeah, it's on. You can subscribe on YouTube. It's uh, scrolling right underneath us and Every week, we'll have a different member of the Las Vegas wrestling scene on. So, Jody himself, our guest today, thanks for stepping into the ring. And until we step into the ring again next week, I'm Gerald Bentley. Thanks for joining us on LVWS Confidential. And subscribe to us on YouTube. We look forward to talking with you again. Thanks again, Jody. Thank you.